I know one day you'll come back to this video looking for one of the commands we discussed. So here's a cheat sheet right off the bat. Pause if you need to, otherwise let's get into it. The visualizations you're accustomed to seeing on this channel are a really great learning tool for illuminating what's going on inside your Git repository. But outside of the specific examples I feature in these videos, you're kind of in the dark again. So how can you construct your own mental models of the branches, commits, remote repositories, and other important details about your own repositories? Well, that's what this video is about. It's about the essential Git commands that can help you do just that. Let's start by navigating into the directory of our Git repository. As of now, we know nothing about the structure of this repository, so we'll need to uncover information about the branches, commits, and remotes ourselves. The visualizations on the right side of the screen will reflect what we uncover as we go along. The first command to run, and one you're probably already familiar with, is git status. This will give you some basic information about the current branch, working directory, and staging area. Looks like we're on the main branch, but also that this main branch has a remote counterpart, tracked by origin main. This little piece of information tells us that this repository is already linked with a remote repository in another location. This is important, but I'll show you how to get info on things pertaining to remote repos later in this video. Lastly, we see here that our working directory and staging area are clean. This means we neither have made nor have staged any file changes since the last time we made a commit on this branch. Okay, pretty basic, so what's next? Well, we know we have a main branch, so let's get more information on that by running git log. As you can see, we get a lot of good information here, but for me, this screen is always a bit of an overload. So instead, let's just hit Q to exit out of this log output and instead run git log dash dash one line to simplify the output. Okay, much better. Now we're learning a couple new things. First, we see that there are four commits on the main branch that were created since the repository first got created. And we also see that each of these four commits have identifiers and messages. So via these messages, we can get a better idea of the changes introduced by each commit. Another tidbit you're going to notice here in the log output is that origin main is referencing the same commit as our local main, meaning our local main branch and the remotes main branch are up to date with each other, uh, assuming we've synced recently, of course. Again, I'll talk more about remote repositories and branches later on in this video. Okay, we have a pretty good idea about the main branch now, but what about the other branches? If other branches have deviated from main but haven't been merged back yet, we won't see them in this log output. So let's start by running git branch to get a list of all of our local branches. As you can see here, we have one other branch called middleware. So let's switch to that and run git log one line again to get some more information. First off, a thing to notice in this output is that I don't see the main branch pointer anywhere in the commit list. This means that the middleware branch deviated from the main branch sometime back in history and hasn't been merged back yet. If we compare the commit hashes from the main branch, we can find a common ancestor beginning at this commit here. This means that this commit is where the middleware branch forked off from main, and we know that that branch has two new commits added since it was forked. By the way, another way to identify this common ancestor is by using the command git merge base and passing it the names of both of those branches. Here you can see it produced the commit identifier of that same commit we just saw. Okay. With that, we know the basics about our local repository, branches and commits and things like that. But there's also that big question mark around the remote counterpart that we see is linked with this repository. So let's dive into that next. First, let's start by using git remote dash V. This will display the location of the remote repository that's linked to your local copy. As you can see in the output, git gives the label origin to this remote repository and associates it with the URL where that repository can be found. We can also glean via this URL that the remote repository is hosted on GitLab. And that means when we both push and fetch, we'll be interfacing with the repository hosted at that location. This is good information. So next, let's find out about any interactions between the branches in our remote repository and any ones in our local repository. But before I go into this, I wanna urge you to have an understanding of Git collaboration techniques like push, fetch, and remote tracking branches. Without this background information, the next section of this video might not fully click. Check out the video that just popped up or check the description for a list of other videos I have on that topic. Okay, let's start by running git branch a. This gives us advanced information about branches. Here we can see that branches prepended with that remotes dash 
represent any remote tracking branches that we have synced with our local repository. We see that we have a remote tracking branch for main. Okay, cool. We can also see that we have a remote tracking branch for some branch named search bar that we don't have locally. This just means that the remote repository contains a branch called search bar, but we haven't copied it locally yet, so we can't really work on that branch. But notably, we also see that we do not have a remote tracking pointer for our middleware branch. This just means that our middleware branch hasn't been shared to that remote repository yet, and it's just local only. So at this point, we have a pretty good idea of the structure of our local repository, and we have a little bit of additional information we can build on if necessary about our remote counterpart. And just as a kind of a quick little aside here, you can always run git log origin slash search bar to get a list of commits on any remote tracked branch, even if you don't have a local copy yet. But I wanted to keep this video relatively simple, so dissecting remote tracking branches like that is probably too advanced for what I want to do here. But you know, if you need help with something like that, check out the other videos or leave me a comment. Okay, before we wrap up this video, let's take just a quick review of some of the commands that we talked about. You can always start by running git status to get an idea of your current repository state and the working directory and staging area. Then you want to run git log to get an idea of the commits and the branches that you're working with. Remember, you could also run git merge base with the name of two branches to find their shared ancestor commit. This is going to tell you where a branch forked off from another branch. Remember that you can use the git branch command to get a list of all of your local branches. And if you're curious about any remote tracking branches, you can always append that dash a flag to the branch command. Lastly, you can get some information about the location of any remote repositories that are linked to your local repository by running git remote dash v. This is going to be really useful when you start cloning and forking and maybe contributing to open source. It's also really critical when you start collaborating with others on Git projects. All right, I think that'll about do it for this video. Let me know if I should go in depth on more of any of these topics. And if you were curious about some of that more advanced stuff, check out the videos linked in the description or any of my lessons on my learning platform, learngit.io. I'm sure you're going to find some interesting stuff over there. All right, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.